Evening all, how are we all doing? All right, let's see who's in. Darius, Pondipip, hey, good to see you. Oh, quite a week. Nice, Darius. Um, Michael. We've got a bot in. Bremens. Good to see you all. Audio, video, okay, cool. Let's get started. Uh, I'm fighting my own uh, sleepiness with this uh, caffeinated asbestos. And the clear stuff too. Let's see. So we, we finished off here last time. Shin gave us some insight that let us uh, fix up the updating uh, process. As you can see on the right, we've got a, I swapped out one of the sprites. Uh, so we're not firing ships. We're firing little bullets now. Um, did we finish? Did we have that end of last week? I can't actually remember. Um, it's probably in here actually. Dun, 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 dun. One thing that I did end up fixing, so there was one tweak that uh, Shamara mentioned as well, as well, which was you don't need to set an element type on an array if it's instances of classes, because classes can be redefined, so it's not going to give you any kind of optimization there. I fixed a really stupid collision bug, and it was another case where I had left a, um, a global variable, an old global variable. I hadn't swapped it to a, the newer one, so we were... Remember when the uh, bullets were hitting things that weren't there? It's because they were hitting old ships um, that weren't there anymore. So that was that. Um, a little tweak, so spawn still worked okay. And this was just which, if you're uh, spawning things by hand, which list do you write them into? Uh, so there was a little tweak to get that working, but it otherwise, again, not much of interest. Um, and... Oh yeah, and spawning the bullet because all of a sudden the collisions were working properly. Um, let's jump to this actually. We can see it. Here's our ship. Um, so remember that everything that's being done is rel is meant to be relative to your character. We haven't got that right everywhere, but um, if we everything's fine if we spawn thirty units ahead. But if we switch it back to oh, I'm in an older version. One second. If we switch this back to 30, yeah, that was it, rather than 40, then we get no bullets, because what's happening is they're spawning, colliding with the ship that shot them, and then dying immediately. Um, so we put them at 40, and everything's okay. So that's where we're going to start shooting them from, and that works. The zero is centered on this sprite, so that's cool. Um, what are we going to do today? I actually noted some things down. I want to start messing around with input, because it would be really nice to have a gamepad hooked up to this thing. I'm not actually sure where my gamepad is. It's over there. I wonder if it all still works. We'll see. Um, we will probably look at adding the states to the actors. I actually would quite like to get that done because that'd be quite simple and fun. It'll be progress on the way towards um, our original proto code that we wrote uh, the other week. We're going to put some aliens in up here. We're going to have one ship. Uh, and um, yeah, that'll be how we start basically. Talking of alien sprites, I saw this uh, this guy's um, site with a load of free sprites. What I really liked in this, other than just there were some, some you know, decent sprites in here, normal maps. So what we can do in the future is, holy crap, this screen's bright. Um, we will have these sprites and give them normal maps so we can have like shading them on the stuff like this as they move around. That's going to be fun. It's also one of those nice cases where it's good to have you want shaders in your 2D engine. Even if you're not doing 3D, it's useful to be able to compute things in 3D. So yeah, this will be fun. We've got a, we have some things to play with here. Um, I should shove this in Twitch chat, shouldn't I? Uh, Twitch.tv. And I'm probably not logged in anywhere. So let's log in. Is it gonna remember me? If not, then we're not doing it. Oh yeah, we're all good. Ba -bum -bum. Go up here, dashboard. Okay. Come on, computers. It's like I'm streaming or something. Um, not channel feed, chat. There we go. Bam. Have one of them. Let's actually pop this out and do its own thing so we don't have to have all this up. Leave you guys up there. Nice. So, um,. And uh, Michael Fiano is saying, I have a sprite sheet uh, for you I made. Awesome, dude. Oh, in that case, that takes precedence. Um, send it my way, and that'll be wicked. Um, what game pad do you use? A guitar, a guitar Hero device, rock band drum? That'll be awesome. 
But no. Uh, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, doing a kind of spaceship beat game. That'd be silly. Uh, no, just a little PS3 controller will probably do. 4K by 4K sprites. Let's have a look at this sheet. I'm looking on the other computer. So you'll have to kind of make do with that. Come on. What am I doing? Open that in a new window. Ooh. Oh. Tycholeen fucked up that link. Never mind. Dude! Are you kidding? Oh, wait a second. This actually looks related. These look like some of the same ships. Nice. And you've got the metadata to pass it. Dude, well, that sounds like a project we're going to have to do another week then. That's perfect. Perfect thing to do. So thank you very much. That actually doesn't fit in with our current model um, at all. So I'm going to have to think about how I want to handle sprite sheets like that. Because so far, um, even though it's not a great way of doing it, visuals have been like in individual files. And I was going to have sprite sheets be per actor. But don't know. We might go this way. So that sounds cool. So the first thing I'd like to do is if we go back to our design we did in week zero, we had this thing where as well as defining actors like this, um, well, we started off like this, but then we looked a little further and we nice to have different states for the actors. So you would give the state a name with a keyword and then you would have an implicit program where you would write the code. So I'm gesturing with my hands, of course. But what I mean is this stuff. And then you would be able to say change mode I might change this to change state though, um, and it would switch to one of these. So this is like when the ship updates, it runs in normal mode until you say change to bullet mode, and then it only runs in bullet mode until it changes back to normal mode. And this way you can have a bunch of different states and you can switch between them. I'm not sure if it's a good idea, but it's one we're going to try out. Um, so what I'd like to do is implement this. So I'm going to have a quick look to make sure I'm not missing anything obvious. Nope, it's just uh, the body now becomes a list of states instead of code. Fine. So we're going to go and jump to this macro where it's implemented. It's getting a bit beefy, so we'll have to split this up soon and make it a bit um, easier to read. We're also going to have to do some um, checking at the moment because we're like if you make mistakes right now, the errors are going to be rather cryptic, and we're going to want better things. So the body is now going to be the states. Um, let's see where body is used. It's only used down in update. What I would like to do is uh, we're going to actually call out to another function. We're going to call gen state funks, I think. I think this is how we're going to do it. Um, and we're going to pass in the name. And we're going to just splice in whatever the result of this function is. Um, and we're going to pass in the states. I think that's okay. Also, in the class, as well as a visual, all actors are now going to have a state. And the state they default to is the first state in the states list. So I suppose we can throw a quick assert in here, even though it's not going to do much. We just assert there are states. So the we want the first thing, which is meant to be a keyword, out of the first state. So this is going to be a bit ugly, but like I say, we will improve this in time. First of first of states is the init form of the state slot in this class. If that seems weird, it's going to become clear soon, so don't worry. Um, undefined variable body. Oh yeah, still trying to do that in update. Um, what we're going to do... Hmm, how should we do this? I want to move this up here for reasons that will be clear soonish. We're going to just call it state funks. Uh, we're going to put it here. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to just put... State funks, splice them in. This function doesn't exist, so it's complaining, and that's fine. We're going to go and define it right here, right now. So the goal is, for every state, we're going to generate a new function. So we're going to loop for states um, 
in the states. And then we're going to collect a load of functions. So it's going to have a state func name. So we're going to have to generate that state func name. Um, so question marks or at because they'll show up nice and bright blue here and it won't compile. It'll just say that variable doesn't exist. Um, it's going to take an argument. I think it should take exactly the same arguments as update currently does, which is self. And okay, so what does a state have in it? If we look at the, let's bring up the proto code, shrink this down a little over here, go back and look at that proto code. See, each um, state definition has a state name and then the body. So it will be something like, let's, where's our loop gone? Loop, there we go. It will be the state name. And then the rest, which I think we do with uh, the cons operator here, the one of the few, only infix, probably the only infix operator in common list break in, in the standard. Can't remember actually. Um, and we'll say body. And then we're going to do this. So just like we had in update, we in fact we're just going to we're just going to take update. We're going to rip all the contacts out of update, and we're going to stick them in here now. And that's pretty much it. We've still got to work out the state function name, and then we're going to have to do something about update. So what's going to happen down in update is we're going to say depending on Oops. with slots state depending on the state that we're in we're going to call a particular function and the function so we're going to return a list of function definitions and the second element of a uh, function definition is the name so up here, when we've generated our functions, we can say func names is going to be mapcar second state functions. Um, and the states themselves, the first thing in each one of those was the uh, name of the state. So what we can do is we can say um, Let's actually put it down after this. Doot, doot, doot. State names is map car first of states. Then this first first down here is actually just going to be the first of state names. So that's going to be our default state. In fact, let's uh, let's make it clearer. Let's just do this. Default idiot. You can't auto complete something you haven't written before. Default state. is the first of state names. Cool, so now we've got a list of function names and a list of state names. As we go dependent on the state, we're gonna go loop for state, whoops, in state names for func in func names, collect, and what we're gonna collect is state and a call to the function passing in self like this one style warning is that undefined function gen state funks okay yeah because we haven't finished it up here and we haven't finished it because well, there's a few things wrong here local var names is not known Ooh. local var names is calculated out here So we need to pass this into this function as well. Um, so down here in gen, whatever the fuck, where did we leave it? Here! Ah, oh, just not quite the right width, there we go. Cool. Um, no complaints there and very few complaints here. One style warning, which is this variable is not defined, which is correct. 
And what are we going to call it? We'll just... Um, do I have a shorthand symbol for this? Okay, sorry, a shorthand function. I think I might have a utils. I don't have a utils file yet. Every project has a utils file. It's the bane of everything. Okay, right. So, um, in package, which is hopefully spelled correctly, I'm just going to make a helper function for defining, for interning new symbols. It just makes my life a little easier. Um, simb and rest um, names, parts, whatever. We go format nil um, like this, and we do parts, and then from that we do intern. Oh yeah, we're not getting any uh, auto completion help yet. Slime enable concurrent hints. Excuse me. Right. So now, if we bring up the REPL, and we say simb um, a and then 1, we get a symbol called a1. I don't need the second argument from intern, so I'm just going to say values. Nice. And it's going to be interned in the current package, which for now is fine. Um, we'll probably change that later, and yeah, we'll get to that. Where were we? We were in define. Where's define? Where is it actually? Actors? Yes, here we are. So now we can call sim. We'll call it with name. We'll call it with a hyphen. Um, and we'll call it with the state name. Let's see what happens now. We get no warnings. And let's go to test. Okay, so default state. Ooh, I don't like that indentation. Oh, that's what this is going to be like. It might not fly. Um, okay, we'll see. Let's uh, expand the actor and see what we've got. So we have a new update function called ship default. And if the when update gets called, we check what state we're in. We grab that out of the uh, object. The default is, sorry, the, the, yeah, the, the default state is called default. That's fine. Um, if the state is default, we um, delegate updating to ship default function, which is here. And that's cool. And so, yeah, now we can define different states like, um, Ship might have a default state and a um, invulnerable state. And in this state, um, you wouldn't be able to take damage or something like this. For now, we'll just say print foo or who, apparently, is what we're going to type there. Let's expand this macro again to just make sure that we're getting the things we expect. Okay, now we've got two update functions, one called ship default, one called ship invulnerable. Our default state is still default. And now we can see our case statement is handling both of these states. Um, seeing as it's actually invalid to go to a state other than these two, I think we'll put e case here. And um, so then it will throw an error if we're not in one of these two states. So that's kind of... Um, okay, I'm getting some advice in the um, chat right now. Point of him's asking, um, did you figure out uh, why you had some fucked up lag on the stream last week? No idea, mate. Absolutely none. Um, it's a real bummer. I'm hoping it's just a one-off, just shitty day of internet connectivity. But if it starts again this week, it'd be rather annoying. Uh, I can't put that down to Twitch, of course. Um, I don't think it was them. Uh, Michael's saying that the, the uh, sprites that he's uh, sprite sheet he's made is packed using the max rect algorithm from the game box sprite packer. Awesome. Um, so I'm guessing that's another Lisp library we've got in like Lisp games or something. That is very cool, man. <laughs> uh, 
Darius killed a computer with sprites, but now he's back. Awesome. Um, and Fiano is saying that, uh, yeah. I will settle on one name for you eventually, dude. Uh, but those sprites are pulled from various free-to-use sources and modified by myself. I have the credits file too if you want it another time. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. We'd have to include that. That would be uh, weird if we didn't. Oh, yeah, the metadata would be cool. Um, just because this is like... Rather than this being any kind of sensible engine, I'm just making something that kind of feels fun and is easy to play with. Um, if having if the better solution adds too much cognitive load, I'd rather use a worse solution that's easier to understand. So that would be a reason for not using that thing. If turning out if it adds something that isn't immediately like understandable, but we'll work that out when we play with it. We've got a test. We've got a test. Um, he sent the metadata, which is awesome. I will, I mean, all this stuff is being um, logged uh, by the uh, Tycholine chatbot. So this is all available on Chimera's logs, IRC logs. So I can check that out later. And he's also saying that um, Symbolicate does exactly the same thing as my little function. And let us see. Um, Symbolicate, no, nope. Alexandria first. Yep, so it does. Don't know why I wasn't using that then. That's kind of dumb. Right, so in that case, I can go and where's my utils file? Delete that. And go to our package and then we'll say import, whoops, no, import from Alexandria Symbolicate. Also with Jensen's because that's always useful. Cool. Nice. So, um, hopefully now, if we compile this, it doesn't crash. Nice. Okay, so we have um, we have states now. Though this first one having this weird indentation really bugs me, um, and I'm not sure if I can actually fix that because this just seems to be Emacs indentation stuff. Blah. No, that's weird. It's something to do with default. I think we're running into some weird rule there. Let's call it main. Either way. Oh, we're in a weird state now. Interesting. So, what just happened? I think I know just what just happened, but I want to step through it. So, let's bring up the inspector. And let's look for... Oh, I can't remember the name of anything. One second. Darth Lisp. Um, what was the array that we had everything? Was it in actors? Current actors. There we go. Oh, we can just go down here. Go in here. Inspect value. Let's bring this over here. So, we had... We've got... More ships than I would expect right now. What the fuck? Interesting. Um, okay, so we have a ship and it has a state which is default. So what happened is we recompiled um, where's we recompiled this. Let's expand that macro and have a look at it. Um, and it changed the init form of state to main. However, that doesn't count as an, as something that um, causes all of the current ships to be updated. So, um, yeah. So we are going to have to add something else to our list of things to update. Update all existing actors of type ship. And we use this so we could change the um, 
the sprite life, we are going to want to do that now for the state as well, just in case the default state has changed. So we'll do that. And then we should have everything back to life. So let's go back to our macro again. Let's go down to the bottom where this is. Update all existing actors of type. And then I'm going to move this stuff down to a new line. So we've got the name, the visual, and then we're going to have the default state. It's going to be in there as well. Um, I'm also going to throw another insert in here just for my own sanity. Assert that every um, state name is a keyword. We'll do that in a second. Let's have a look at this default state. That's good. And the reason for that just is otherwise people could use a normal symbol for the name, in which case this would be just a regular symbol, unquoted which means it would get evaluated, which means we would get a, not, a variable does not exist error. So we're just avoiding that. And again, when we do better error messages, we'll clean a lot of this up. So now we're calling this function with three arguments, but we can see from the signature it only takes two. So let's go here, default state. Um, ah, but now we, can't, we don't want to just reset every... Hmm. We don't want to reset all of the actors. We don't want to set all of the actors back to the original state. They might be legitimately in another state for a reason. We want all of the old states and all of the new states so we can update them, don't we? This is actually kind of interesting. Let me think about that again. So we have a ship and it's poodling along and it's in default. And then I rename this to main. And because of that, I need to go through and update them somehow. So if it's in a state that we've just changed, we need to go and put it in the new name state. So, um, What we might do is store the valid states with the actor for now. And then when we recompile this, we send all of the new state names. And then any of them that have changed, um, we're going to update. Hmm. Now, what problems could we have with that? What happens if we do, if we have some state foo and invulnerable? And we just do this, which is a perfectly reasonable thing. We just want to reorder them for tidiness reasons. Then we don't really want to leave the current state. And so we don't want to sort by just by the order that's here. So the best thing I, to do, I suppose, is we take the state names and we sort them lexicographically. And then just so we put them in a order, an order, and... Um, then we can compare them. Is that okay? Nah, that's gonna be weird too. So that structural change is actually kind of weird. Unless we do something smarter, we can't really protect ourselves against this so much. I suppose we can actually. Um, we can just say, if the state we're currently in is in the list of new states, then don't try and update where we are. Only update our current state if it's no longer in the list of states. And then we just have to match it by uh, position. There's not really much more we can do but like that. Well, we, we could do more, but um, without getting too crazy on this, that'd be fine. Um, There's also a format symbol, which is similar. Oh, that actually sounds ideal. I, I probably would want that all the time. One second. Alexandria, I want to look at that now. Format symbol. Yeah, package of control and arguments. Ah, that's ideal. That is ideal. So I could say make a symbol in Keppel called, I don't know. Oh, yeah, we'd have a string. I'd do a hyphen a, and then this could be... Um, 
Dogs and cats living together. Right, like this, cattle, dog, cats. Cool. Yeah, format symbol. I need to go and replace some shitty functions I've got all over the place then. Um, that is handy. I guess the implementation is practically the same. Yep, apply format to a load of stuff with standard IO syntax. Nice. Kind of handy. Groovy, groovy, groovy. So, what we'll do is in our define actor, we are going to send the list of state names. So we'll do this, and we'll go here. And then, actually, while we're here, we want to have a list of valid valid states. And we're going to say nil, and we're just going to um, populate this soon. Let's do that. We'll populate this from here. Valid states. So the ending goal is just going to be to um, set the valid states. Actually, I'm, just, I'm going to re rename this to state names for a reason. Uh, because here I'm going to do with slots. I'm going to put visual in here, spelled correctly, and valid states here, which I think is what we call the slot down further below. Yes. Um, but it was above. We're going to put the A, which is the actor. And then we can just put visual here. Oh, wait. Ah. New visual. New visual. There we go. Valid state is going to be state names. And we're going to call this new valid states. Naming people. The hardest thing, new valid states. Cool. So that is going to be the end goal is to do that. But we also want to fix up things if they're wrong. Um, so how do we do that? Um, I am actually going to go back to valid states and give it a default value, and I will for now make it the uh, state names. And the reason is that when this function's called, it's going to want to look up something to make sure what it was originally. The first time it compiles, it'll be moot, but the second time it'll be useful, I think. What am I doing? Valid states, down here. Cool. Coffee. Oh yeah, um, like I was saying that, there is a game jam, which is on different dates. Game jam 2018. It's two months, 11 days, eight hours and 26 minutes from right now on April the 20th. That sounds ace. So what I'll try and do actually is we'll try and get this thing usable by then. I mean, it will be usable by then. That's fucking ages away. But um, and then I'll probably make an entry using this which would be sick. It'd be nice to have that done. Um, it's actually, seen as we've, we've got this up, let's go through the details. So, um, the disc Game Jam is Game Jam, taking place for 10 full days with a theme. It runs mid-April of every year. After the jam is finished, four days are given for everyone to try out the game submissions and vote for their favourites. It may be written, it must be written in a dialect of Lisp, but any dialect of Lisp this includes and not limited to common Lisp, Scheme, Emacs, Clojure, your Lisp, whatever Lisp you've made up, bring it along. There's a dude who did make his own Lisp and made a game in it and it looked sick. So do that. You may use existing libraries. You may use third party or self-created. We don't care as, as long as they have an open source license. Oh, that's good to know. Um, you may use existing assets, including but not limited to artwork, music, sound effects. We've got loads of details in here. I won't go through them all. 
Um, you may develop your own tools, engines, la la la. You may even use an existing game as a base to build on. Basically, we're saying, just come and play. Make some things. Have some lispy fun. Hang out on the IRC and have a good time. Um, you must submit at least a source archive, either a zip or a table, with instructions on how to compile and run your game. Uh, to get the most people to test your game, you may also want to include pre-compiled binaries. That is the one I'm going to have to give myself lots of time for because it's always such a fucking palaver. Um, but I will get something that's uh, usable for this one, for sure. Okay, within the source archive, please include an open source license you're releasing the game under. Um, you do not have to target multiple architectures, but more people are able to test your game if you do, so that's cool. And then just some advice. The link's already in the chat, and I will try to remember to post that on my YouTube channel as well. Uh, do it. Do it. And I'll actually do it this year, rather than being a lazy ass, which I know not, normally I'm not. So, let's, um, let's get back to this. So, we wanted to check... I want to get the current state of the actor that we're looking at. I want to say when the... This is one of the times where I don't want to use unless, and it's purely as how it reads thing. Um, sometimes it, like, when, when not, find state in new valid states. Do some stuff. This is technically just unless find state, but it just feels soft. Sometimes I actually just like how when not reads. Um, so, when we can't find it in there, then find the position. Yeah, this is actually going to need a couple of different things now I'm thinking about. We get the position of the state in the current valid state list. And then we're going to check if... Um, The length of new valid states is greater than or equal to position. Is that correct? No, it's going to be um, because you can't index at length. So we'll just say if position is less than uh, the length of the new valid states, then we're cool. Um, no. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, if it's less than, we're cool. So we can just do, um, we can set the state to be new valid states position. Cool. So that covers the case that we had originally when this was called default. And then we changed it to main. Then it will look up at the same, like, the same position in this list and say, oh, I think I'm still in main. That'll do for now. Um, but what might have happened is we've deleted the state that you were in and there's no position matching. I'm not even sure this position matching thing is a good idea. Might just do it if you can't find the state you're in, you go back to the default state. That's actually way more reliable. Yeah, that sounds less janky. Let's just do that. Well, actually, what do you guys think? This weird positional shit or just pick the default state if your state doesn't exist anymore? I'm really leaning to that one, actually. Because this sounds jank. So that would just be... We're not in there. Set state to first of new valid states. And all of this goes away. Default. Nice. There we go. And that's it. And what that should mean now is we can go here and rename this main, and it all explodes! Okay, when attempting to read, uh, the, slot, the slot state is missing from the object bullet. Why? It's very strange. But a bullet is an actor. Oh yeah, a little tip. If, you, um, if you're in an error message like this, and you um, type control sorry, not control, um, capital C, so shift C, it will give you the arguments, it will give you like the error, it'll inspect the error itself. 
which is cool because when you go in the format arguments, you can normally find the object that you're interested in. Like this guy, who indeed does not have a state. Vi. Have I really not recompiled since I've added states? I probably haven't actually recompiled bullets since I did that. Huh. One second then, and I've I said abort, so the game has stopped, and that's fine. Let's recompile this, and we'll recompile bullet, and... Ooh. Oh yeah! Okay, this is now freaking out because we haven't given this a... Um, we haven't wrapped it in the, new, in the new syntax, the new state stuff, so we can just do main. Cool, now that compiles. Now we can say daft start. Okay. And now if we change this to moo, everything's still working. And we can change it back to main, and it's still working. That's great. And it seems as we're not... Wait a second. Let's go down here again. We're not using valid states here. We're only using new valid states now. So we don't need this here. We don't need to update it. Um, which means we don't need it in the object at all. Where are you? Def class. Valid states. Go away. Gone. So let's look at current actors. Let's go and inspect that. Let's look at ship. Um, yeah, this looks good. It's in the main state. And we've got bullets. That guy's in the main state too. Awesome. Okay, so that's part one of this. Um, so we've added new state syntax to actors. I write an approximate of everything I mean. Approximation of everything I mean. Um, oh yeah, I don't actually want to do it like that. I want to... Come on. E shell. Nice. And we send that. That's gone. And now we need to be able to transition states. So we need to be able to switch state. Um... Yeah, how are we going to do that? This is going to be more useful when I implement aliens. Because um, what I want to do is have the ship, an alien ship go backwards and forwards for like 20 seconds firing bullets and then just zip down the screen and then remove itself. And that's it gone from the game. Um, and that's going to be our first little enemy that we can deal with. We're also going to get rid of these guys and all that kind of stuff. But... Um, So uh, let's do that. Oh yeah, the one thing I haven't actually shown you is that um, the reason we do, like before I mentioned, the reason we're doing all the updates in lockstep is so that when we do something like die or, um, or react to a collision, it doesn't stop the other party in the collision reacting to the collision as well. So if two things collide and then this one goes, hey, am I touching anything? Yes. Okay, I'm going to move back to here. And then this guy updates and says, am I touching anything? It says no. That's really annoying. So what it does instead is it will say yes, because it won't actually do the update until the end of the frame. Um, it won't update. Yeah. You know what I mean. And the advantage of this is then we can do things like... We can take the same rule that we have for um, bullets with minor modifications, like we'll remove that Y thing. So remove the all. And now bullets should be able to destroy ships. There we go. That's really nice. I wanted to be able to have that logic. Um, so that's cool. That gets rid of the two ships we don't need now. That's nice. So more coffee and then <laughs> yeah, vulnerable didn't last long. Um, you're saying 
abbreviates even invulnerable? I'm confused! Hey, love like syntax. Good to see you, man. All right. Let's, uh, since we're not using these states yet, we're going to get rid of them. This guy's still working fine. What's next? Let's see if we can get controls in, because that would just be fun. Um, we'll get swap state in later. I mean, it's not very hard, but basically what we do... Ah, actually, it might be a good idea to have that list of valid states. Hadn't thought about that. Nope. No, I know how we can do it instead. Um, so, in our original design, where is it? Uh, 2D engine thing. We had this thing called change mode. We're going to call it change state instead. Um, yeah, let's put it here. It's going to be a def method, which means it's going to need a generic. Def generic change mode is going to change state, and it's going to be new state. We're going to emit this from... Okay, one second. We're going to emit the method from the macro. Uh, we'll leave this in here somewhere. Oh, what a mess. What a mess. Okay. Let's go to define actor again. And in here, we will have the change mode. Change state method. And it's, ah, oh, that's interesting as well. How are we going to, this, this isn't quite right. Okay, so the reason, I'm, I'm chewing away here. We want to be able to say change mode and just change state. Ah, oh, can't, can't unread it. Change state and change to this state called bullet mode. Um... In fact, seeing as mode is going to keep messing me up, we're going to change it to state. There we go. We want to say change state to bullet state, and we're going to go here in the next frame. But we don't want to have to pass in ourselves. We just want that to be implicit. Um, but if we do a method, it needs to select on something. So this should actually be the implementation of change state. Um, So it'll be change state like this, where we defun, uh, change state, it's going to be new state, and then it's going to call change state with self, which we hope is going to be bound to something, because we'll be calling it from inside an actor, with new state, actor, yeah, cool, that might work. So let's go back down to change state down here. Okay, self is name and the new state is something, some keyword, doesn't matter what it is. Um, we're just going to assert that new state is a member of our list of state names. And then we're going to set um, come now, Chris. Typing is our specialty. Right, set of state to be new state. Nice. Now, if we recompile bullet and we recompile ship, in fact, I'll like expand this macro so we can see what we've done. We have now got a method called change state, which works on bullets. Um, takes the new state and just make sure that it's main because that's the only option right now and then it will set the state to be this new state that was passed in. Um, if you have lots of states as we'll see here like foo and foo print bar bar then our change state method is going to check that the new state is one of these three, and then it will set the state to that. Pretty simple, but um, it's good. So now the change state function will work inside actors. Um, we can, like, I will do that now, actually. We'll just say 
this will say change state to foo. And now our ship doesn't do anything because it's in this state. Oh, actually, if we go to the REPL, we'll see fuck loads of foos. Um, but that's not valid anymore. So we'll do this. Interesting. Okay, so when we remove states, the assertion member new state main failed with new state equals foo. Something called change state. I didn't expect that. Oh no, of course, of course, sorry. Yes, I, I, I'm mixing up two different parts here. So we deleted those two states, which meant it refer, reverted back to the default state, which is main. Then it tried to change to the foo state, which no longer exists, and it's freaking out. Sweet, so we just delete this, and then we say continue. Everything is cool. We've stopped printing foo. Our ship is back to life. Nice. Cool. So actually, let's save this. And let's uh, just append that there. Sorry to those who've already pulled it. Rebase is my friend, but not yours. So, caffeine. Oh, did I have a typo in there? Oh, nice. That's a good one. Invulnerable. Sweet. Okay. In our original design, we had some really simple shit for input. Um, here we were mixing mouse and gamepad, which is insane, but I guess we were just making notes. But we're going to assume a bunch of things. We're going to assume there's only ever one mouse, so we can do things like this. Would be nice to have multiple gamepads, though, so I don't really want to lock it down this way. But let's get basic input in. It would be kind of cool to control this with a mouse, actually. That could be quite nice. What I don't really like, I suppose, is we're setting our position. Here is one place where we're setting our position in a kind of global way. We're not moving left or right or anything like that. We're just setting our X position to something in world space. And that kind of goes against the um, ethic we've had so far. So I don't like this. We're going to have to do something else. So I guess we'll get differences in mouse position and we will apply those to this. So we'll just say increment by mouse x, mouse change x or whatever, something like this. Okay. So I haven't used the input library in God knows how long, so I don't know how to use it. <laughs> Let's go and find out. Um, so it's called Skitter. It lacks documentation. Alas. Okay. How do we use this? Skitter, is there a base? Is there common? There's got to be some kind of update thing that gets called every frame. Actually, no, I, I think I remember how this works. It gets, we, hmm. No, wait a second, we did, we did some stuff with this. I know we've done stuff with this. When we did um, play with verts, we had some subtleties and it was only really important for the Gamepad. Okay, so we had to tell it when a frame was over um, because there are some things that are frame aware. Or basically like with, like an input frame rather than necessarily a graphics frame, but yeah. So decay events was the thing we called. That was that. That was the only thing we needed to put in the main loop. Okay, so... 
that's not going to make the most sense yet, but I'm, I'll go back over that when we get to it. So where's our main loop? It's down here. We step engine. He has no idea what Decay Events is. Can we just import? Let's see what... um. Ah, the works. Skitter. Package. What do you... What do you define? A load of shit. Here we go. Yeah, let's just take all of this. Nice. Oh, while I'm here, we're going to change this to define package rather than def package because it's better. It's a lot more friendly for constantly recompiling. If you do def package, and you add a symbol, and then you remove it later, it'll freak out going, oh, but there's also this symbol called foo that you exported. And it's like, yeah, but I don't want to export it anymore. Uh, define package is a lot more liberal of what it allows you to do. I just prefer it. It's got a few extra features as well, which can be quite handy, allowing you to re-export a load of symbols from another package and stuff like this. Okay, so that's done. Um, now I just kind of want, what shall I do? Yeah, let's bring up the REPL. REPL. Let's go to test. Let's go into the ship. And we're just going to do some debugging. We'll do print. Um, mouse zero. And there's probably some like mouse position or something like this. Mouse pos. Okay. Okay, so now I'm moving my cursor and we can see that value is changing. That's great. Mouse move, that will be even better. Fuck yeah. That is exactly what I want. Of course, clearing the screen isn't going to help because we're still printing. Let's get rid of that. Um... And one thing I didn't recall, was that returning it as a vector 2? Yes, it was. Good job. So we can just say, take the X of that and shove it in. Increment X by the By this. Time is defined but never used. That is true. Bam. And we have a little ship we can draw. Except, obviously, that the mouse input isn't happening when I'm going to the edge of the screen, which is rather annoying. But, you know, we've, we've, got, uh, we've got something we can move now. And now we need to have it that when we click, uh, we fire a bullet. So we'll just do... When mouse button... How do we do it? Input source is mouse zero. Oh, we, the, the zero is optional, so we can just do the mouse. And the index is zero. Nope. What is this then? Is there some... There's a package for this, I think. Because input event IDs are per host. Like, trying to generalize that stuff across different backends is really fucking annoying because you're never using all of the backends at once and you end up having to take the union of no you have to take the intersection between all the features of all the different hosts so you have something that can take can do one thing but another one can't so you have to lose that thing which is rubbish so we are using uh keppel.skitter Oh, where is it? It's actually skitter SDL2 mouse buttons. And it says mouse left. Let's just take this for a second. How are you meant to use that? I just want to check to see what uh, the goals were. 
because I can't remember. Ah, oh, cool. Okay, so if we just use... Okay, if we just use keppel.skidder.sdl2, then we get all this anyway. In fact, if we use keppel.skidder, we get all of this anyway, I think. So let's just swap out skidder for keppel.skidder. Recompile. Again, if we were using def package, that would have just run an error. Which is why I like this one. And now we should have mouse.left. And we go over here. And now we can fire bullets. But sometimes they're dying. I don't know why. They're flickering. It's like bullets are colliding with bullets, which they are. If it's touching anything, it's going to freak out. So we need to be able to start differentiating between different kinds of things. So optional set of actors. Kind of weird that it's just set of actors. It would be nice to be able to say ship, you know? Like, so touching B should be set of actors slash type. So, so then you can just do ship. Yeah, something like that. So at the moment, we're not even using set of actors correctly. And that makes sense. We were just hacking things together, and that's fine. So we kind of want to do one of three things. If set of actors, let's change the name of this first. Set of actors slash actor kind. Kind of want to do if. It's a symbol. Um, we're just going to call this target because it's going to get really horrible just dealing with that variable name. Um, but we do want something descriptive in the signature. Um, if target is a symbol, then we want to um, check against a certain kind of actor. So we call it touch and kind. And it's going to be target and self. Oh, actor and target, I guess. Actually, are we using self in here? Yeah, we're using self. Let's just pass that on. If it's. Um, No, actually, we'll do it like this. Sorry, I'm just refactoring in my head as we go. If it's a symbol, we're going to do this. Otherwise, we're going to be um, touching set self target. So target is going to be the set of actors slash actor kind, or it's going to be the set of current actors. We need these functions now. Ah. Don't need this ignore anymore. We will need this. This is going to be code for touching a set of things. There isn't in loop a way of... Um, Uh, what am I trying to say? Of walking across a sequence, is there? It's just lists or arrays, right? With in or across. See you, Pum. Oh, no. Michael's off. Oh, Blizzard's arrived. Good luck, dude. <laughs> Elevator simulate. 
that's saying the vice of not documenting your stuff. Fuck yeah, man. I, I've I've done I've done the long slog for Keppel. Once Keppel started staying in a particular shape for long enough, um, I do need to do it with Skidder. Skidder's bit was changing for a while. It um, yeah, it was changing fast enough that it was a problem. But it hasn't for a while. But that's kind of because I haven't used it for a while. So I'm not sure what state Skid is in. There's still some standing questions of how you do certain things. If it proves to be impossible with the current system, I'm going to have to rip and tear. So then documenting is kind of a false exercise. But documenting will also get me to touch all of the API again. Or at least, sorry, get all the API in my head again, which will allow me to do a better review. Balance. Right. Um... We'll just call this set. We'll call this set. Um, I'm going to move this back out to here. Actually, we'll just do this. Do this. There we are. Uh, nil is... No, okay. This can't be nil anymore. Good. If, it's either, if this was nil, then it's going to be this list. With this array, rather. And that's going to go to there. If it if it was nil, it would match symbol p. That's why I was worrying. But no, that can't happen. So we're fine. And for now, we're just going to loop across the current actors. And when... Type of actor is... The target we're interested in, um, then we check if we're touching it. Well, it's still hitting each other. Let's go and go back to our test. Let's uh. Let's do a couple of things first. Let's go and check that this is getting called. Hi. No. Why not? Recompile all of that. No. Is that because we didn't go and compile this? Hey, now we're getting lots of high. Fine. Whoa. Let's go and remove that print statement. Now we should be able to shoot out like a wall of bullets. There they go. Sweet. Too many bullets. Nice. There is still potential for us to slow down the way we're doing drawing right now. But soon we're going to throw instancing on top of this thing. And then that will just kind of go away. What I would like to do now is go and grab a coffee. Um... And when we get back, which will just be a couple of minutes, one thing I'm noticing when I'm shooting these bullets is all this black crap around the edges here. And that's because we've still got the border on there. We aren't doing transparency. So I would like to get um, blending turned on in this thing and put a little alpha mask on there. You know, basic stuff. Cool. So I will kick over to the other screen so I can hit pause and I will be back in just a minute.
Fuck you, Darius, this is my house. <laughs> You're not taking over anything. Right, we're back, we're back, we're back. I've already forgotten what I was gonna do. Blending, 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 blending. I'm also annoyed at how slow that moves, so I just want to go and go into tests. Where is it? This mouse move, X times two. Yeah, that's a bit better. Apart from this horrible mouse stuff, but that's fine. Shoot loads of bullets. They're all screwed. Nice. So, let us have a look at that bullet sprite. So, very simple. We've got this guy, and I'm sorry to everyone with even a modicum of taste, but I'm not going to uh, do a good job with this. I'm not going to like put proper transparency on these edges. Um, I'm just going to do this, <laughs> and then throw it back in. Um, so sorry about that. Override bullet. Oh, over down. Um, yeah, it's got. So hopefully, I'm not sure if we can be able to tell on this background, to be honest, but. Ah, no, I can't. Can't get anything good with that. It would be nice to have a slightly better image viewer in Emacs. It sounds really daft, but just being able to throw things up for a second would be quite useful. Um, let's do this instead then. No. This daft. Yeah, that looks like it's got a transparent background. Good. That'll do. We'll recompile this, which is going to reload bullets, and they're still looking janky, which they would, because we haven't got blending turned on. Um, Let's go back to um, the main loop, which is in here somewhere. Step engine, there we go. Update actors, swap. Okay, all the drawing is happening in update actors at the moment. Probably. There it is, draw actor. Okay, this actually might be dirt simple. Let's just uh, make a variable to hold blending vars. Like blending params, sorry. Yeah, blend params will be make blend params. There we go. Pardon me. We can see here that the default uh, when you make blending parameters um, is that the destination RGB is going to be 1 minus source alpha. So it's going to blend based on the alpha values, or the, sorry, the W component, essentially, of the color return from the fragment shader. Which in this case is around here somewhere. Oh no, it's, where is it? Probably back in the original file, actually. Yeah, it's just looking up in a texture. So this is going to be, this is going to be very simple. And now we've got the blending parameters, wherever they've gone, up here. We should just be able to say with blending and say blend grounds. And other than that note about efficiency, it still looks terrible. But it is actually. We are actually. Um... Are we blending that? It's actually really hard to tell. Yeah, I'm not so sure. Yeah. I don't know, but we should be doing blending at this point. Hmm. What if... What if... 
our um, our content system actually has a problem that I didn't think about. Let's go to test because the okay, so we pass in this string and then. Call load text on that name. And we have a load of samplers already cached based on the name. Now we don't take into account whether the file has changed or not. So it's going to just look in the cache and say, hey, there's already one here for bullet. So it's not going to load the new one, which means that probably doesn't have the alpha mask in it, which would explain some things. Um, so let's just be lazy. Let's remove this entry. Let's go back to our test. Let's recompile bullet. Check this. Oh no, the hash table doesn't have it. I don't understand. Right, uh, maybe it'll happen when we fire a bullet. Okay. Doesn't look much better. That's really annoying. It's probably just that, because I think we are tight to the edge of the sprite now, so it, it probably is working. No, it still looks like it has a bloody black border on it, though. It's a bit strange. A bit strange. Uh, what's the best way to test this? Best way is probably to have a proper background on this fucking thing. Um, oh, let's uh, just temporarily. I mean, it's horrible having a black background anyway. But I didn't want to do backgrounds today because I actually want to think about that a bit. And I said that last week as well, actually. Let's just screw with a clear color. Wind it. 3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Horrible. There we go. Nice gray. Oh, actually, there we go. We can see that there is transparency. It's actually transparency in places we don't want it. Um, the or is it? What's the, uh... Ah, yes. They're not, um, they're not blending with each other, but they are blending with the background. That's what it is. Fair enough. Well, we're not going to deal with that for now. Um, we can deal with that another time. Um... We are able to fire way too many, though. So... I want to see what this guy can do. So a stepper can take maximum cache size, maximum there. Uses its default time source. Max cache size is probably the thing I want to fuck with. Um, the thing with a stepper is it saves up time. So if it hasn't been called, say it, say it's said to fire every second, and you haven't called it for ten seconds, that means it's got ten time steps saved up, ten seconds worth of fires. So then the next 10 times you call it, it will fire every time. Um, we don't want that. Um, so we're going to set the max cache size. Is that what it was called? Max cache size. But it's weird. Wait a second. Oh, it's an optional argument. I'm an idiot. Okay, so max cache size is just zero. So I can just do that. And then it won't be saving them up. I think that's all right. That'll either mean it never works or it works perfectly. We'll see. Um, and fun call fire. That's more like every second than every... Every tenth of a second, that's rather strange.
Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with that timing there, but that looks wrong. See, it looks wrong. Yeah, what? That's not right. Doesn't feel like these are getting updated, actually. No, they're not. Hey, this is another thing that we haven't actually fixed yet. Stupid boy, Pike. All right. More effects of hacking. So, hacky hack hack hack. The um currently we pass in values. Oh god damn it, Chris. Here we go. Pass in values. We find the ones that aren't keyword values. We call them local bars. And we only use them in the definition of the class, which means they never get updated. Um, so I think we're probably going to have to do the same things with with these as we did with um, what am I talking about? States, visuals, all that kind of stuff. We want to pass all of them to a function to update the things that are already there. But this is kind of interesting because we can stick anything in here, any expression, and and why is that bothering me? Because because we're emitting a macro, we would want to put the contents of whatever these are down in a list down here. Now. Is that valid? That might actually be fine. Yeah, we just need to execute it. What I was worried about was... Ah, what was that? How am I trying to put it? Whether the value can be... Is a, is a loadable form. Um, so if, if, if objects are evaluated at compile time and then put into the code, like as the result of a macro, um, they need to be not serializable, but savable into the binary result of compiling your Lisp. Um, and that's extended through something called a load, a, a loadable form or whatever it's called. Def, like you do make loadable or something like this. Um, but that's not going to be an issue here. But we do want to... No, I think this is going to work. Okay, right, so... I think I've got that out of my head now. Okay, so local vars. We're going to take local vars. We're going to dump it down here. What do we need? We need a list of pairs of a symbol name, of a slot name, and the value to put in the slot. So we will do uh, vars is... Um, loop for val in local vars um, all right. name val in local vars collect 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 um, not quite sure how I want this yet so I'm kind of noodling this around in my head. Ugh, this is all getting so ugly. It will need fixing. Um, Okay, so now if we go back to bullets and we actually will do ship because it's got more things going on in it. 
Um, it still has the init forms creating things. I'm not sure if I want that in the future. But down here, there's a variable vars, which is a list of lists of pairs of the name of the slot. That is how we name the slot, yep. And the value, which is going to be evaluated when this is run. Okay, I'm all right with this. One mistake that we have got is this paren here, because we haven't wrapped the letter around the update all existing actors. Cool. But that's going to be okay. That's going to be okay, because we just need to do that. Right? Fixed. But now, update all existing actors has to be updated. With bars. And this is interesting, isn't it? Because now we're fucking with all of the ships that already exist. Which is kind of weird. Um, because things like start time, we actually want to know how long these ships have been alive. So if we recompile this, then we basically are resetting every ship. It loses this this correct information of how long it's been alive but we have the contrary point here is where this one we do want to actually create a new stepper so it's a bit of a but bit of a but an elevator simulator sorry for missing your uh, your contribution there i can loop across vectors using a cross but i was wondering if there was something in loop that allows you to iterate across a sequence which could be a list or a vector or a string or you know that kind of stuff of course a string is an array but you know what i mean and there isn't as far as i remember yes there is what is it oh no oh. Oh, I got all my key bindings wrong. Seek. Doesn't mention sequences. Four is in list. Four is across. Four is arithmetic. Subclause, clause, selectable. I mean, we could do for index. Across being the elements of. Oh. Oh. Well, shut my face. If that works, that's very cool. I mean, it's a horrible way of writing it, but um, I... Oh, my God. I'm just... Being the what the hell? I've searched for element in here and I couldn't find anything. Right, we need to test this in the raffle. Loop for x being the elements of. Flectex. Holy shit. Okay, right. You are correct, sir. But why can't I read this spec properly? That's the problem. It doesn't say elements of. Being oh wait the loop facility but that was the spec that should have been 
Yeah, if it's SPCL specific, I don't want to use it. And that, and shame on them. <laughs> like, unless the spec says that it that the other um, that the implementation is allowed to provide extra um, clauses. I'm kind of disappointed that there are extra clauses. I mean, it's useful and stuff, but. The loop facility. Actually, I'll, I'll let you do the hunting for me because <laughs> I'm going to get sucked into that and just read about loop for the rest of the stream, which we boring and we've only got half an hour. So, where's my ship? There it is. Oh yeah, so the uh, the timing's wrong. So we have a twin issue here where we have a case where we don't want to reset a value and a case we do want to reset a value. How do we deal with that? I mean, ultimately we would have to, basically we need to tell the code not to go and update these things. I mean, that's the only way we can do it. So we're going to have to have some additional piece of information, like update nil, or something like this. So we know that when we recompile, we don't want it to be updated. Should we just, I think we'll just go with this for now, and then we'll uh, deal with the other stuff later. So we'll do, 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 do. we'll finish where we were with this, which was for each of the actors we will um, go through the list of vars um, we'll loop for um, slot name val in vars doing set of the slot value of of the actor and the slot name is called slot name and the new value is called val and we compile that okay so now we can go and update any value and that's cool um, but we don't want to update some values and so that means that this list down here or is it this one in local vowels we want to be able to yeah I want to be able to do a better job with this so how do we do it does the destructuring in loop allow keyword arguments? I don't think it does. Um, we're looking for destructuring. There we go. For ABC, I think we can do. In the tree of type specifiers that matches an atom in the tree of variable names in the compound type specifier. So I don't know if we can do anything like um, rest or. Oh no, we can do rest. We can use dotted lists. So we can't do keyword stuff, but we can do dotted list. Oh, and I know another thing actually. Um, when you do loop for x, y in, um, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4. This will freak out, collect um, this x and y, because those aren't lists. But 
if each of these was a list, but it wasn't a two element list. So basically we've provided, we've got, we can populate X, but we can't populate Y. That is allowed. So basically we can use that as optional. So we will just say, um, come on, Chris, what, what do we call it? Um, update. And then we can say when update do this, that will work. And then, okay, so when that means update, the default will then be nil, which I don't think is the right default. So we'll call this static. So when, oh, we'll call it don't change. <laughs> there we go. Don't change. Unless don't change. There we go. We're good there. Let's go back up to here. And now we've got local vars. So we're going to have to go and look at how they're used. This is still valid um, because you can have, I can show this here again in loop. You can have too many items in your destructuring list and it is okay as long as you do something like this <laughs> and don't try and use a thing that doesn't exist. That is fine as well. So that will still work. So what should happen now is if we go to test and we look at, we won't be able to call this, we'll just put nil here and then we do define actor and we should see in our list, start time is still there. No, that's wrong. But fire is there too, that's, that's correct. But this shouldn't be here, this first one shouldn't be. Why? What? Yeah. Values. Why don't you like them? Local bars. That's fine. But here, you should be looking at the last one. Wait, yeah, unless it says don't change. Oh, wait, uh, am, I, am I getting this completely backwards? We want to say don't change is true. So this is kind of like, is it static? So then we do that. Now it's not in the list. Ugh, I don't like that syntax so much, but if it lets us prove a point, let's start with this and we can come back to it. So when we compile this now, we should now have, ooh, is there something funky going on here? I guess I stopped it. Yep, she's gone. Stopped. Oh no, max cache is smaller than step size. Yes it is. Okay, so. Oops. Make things and forget how they work. Um, but, but what? Fine, do that. And it's still complaining. Why? Continue anyway. Hmm, strange. So I'm guessing that every time we've compiled this, it's added to that list of things to do in the next frame, tasks for next frame. Let's look at that list. Yeah, it's got a whole bunch of stuff in here. And when it tries to do it, it's getting an error and then yeah it's getting an error and then doesn't know what to do so it, the thing is still in the list which means that it's going to try again next frame and the next frame but what if the thing that we've written is just fundamentally wrong we actually want that to just go away so i think probably the best thing to do here is if we loop for task in 
task to the next frame and do this with um, just a try catch that eats the error. I guess that's a... Uh, no, that's not quite it. What do we want to do? Yeah, we'll do handler case fun call task. And then if there's an error, we want to provide an option to how do you do that? It's um handler bind? Oh man, I can never remember the syntax for this stuff. Let's look it up. Basically I want to give a an option so you can just skip. Um Actually, it'll be a lot like the continual macro. One second. So, continuable. There we go. Bam. No. Um, but why? No, oh, because I'm just looking in the wrong place. Oops. So we want to do this. Yeah, restart case. And we're going to, in that case, we're gonna, we're just gonna fun call the task. And if it freaks out, we're just gonna say skip task. And actually, we'll just put this as daft skip task. That'll do. And that's continue. And then we should just be able to press C and carry on. And then we'll set the tasks to nil at the end. So we're going back to our error. We say continue, it's gonna freak out, but now we can see that we've got a skip task option up here. So we'll do that. And now we're back to life. And we've got our time limit that's behaving correctly now. So that's 0 0.1 seconds between each shot. Okay, I'm all right with that. So yeah, 0 0.1 seconds. So do 0 0.2 seconds, see what that feels like. See that bunch there? That's the cache, that's the cache of time. I think I want to, I want to do a better job of that. Um, Let's just see if we can do this. Um, yeah, there we go. Now we've not got doubling up. So you can fire every 0 0.1 seconds. Cool. Okay, so we actually got a ton of stuff in this one. Um, So, yeah, there's a few bits. I guess we can commit the change to the bullet first. Bullet has alpha. Now, um, our test, uh, we have basic mouse control and uh, time shots. Our package now pulls in, okay, this actually pulled in skitter and all that kind of stuff, so we should put that into the last commit. Actually, this has the decay events, so let's just commit that and add that to the one with mouse control as well. Um, we've got, this is kind of separate from anything else which is allow skipping of um, end of frame task that errors. And, oh yeah. Um, now checking collision with kind of actor. And this one, which was um, allow redefining 
um, of actor local values. Cool. Bam. All right, okay, so that's um, a bit further along. We've got 15 minutes left. So, no gamepad today, maybe? Maybe. I kind of want to be able to flesh the API out a bit more. So when we want to do, um, I want to be able to say left and right or move horizontally. Maybe that's what it's called, move horizontally. Yeah, maybe you don't get access to X and Y itself at all. Maybe you don't get direct access to X and Y because X and Y is always going to be in terms of world space and that's not where you are. So why do you need access to X and Y? Let's get rid of that for now, which is in this update function up here. Bam, you're gone. Recompile that, come back here. Um, we want a function for actors down here, which is going to be... Um, Ethan, move horizontally. The, actually, it's kind of weird. I, I basically want something to say, somebody just subscribed and I missed your name, but thank you very much. I actually noticed watching back on a few of these streams, I've missed a bunch of uh, people subscribing. Even though I've got the big fat thing saying, somebody subscribed, I never see it because I'm looking this way half the time. So sorry about that. And thanks. Hope to see more of you. What is a good terminology for moving left and right basically i want to i want the um i want to provide a difference in position so like minus five to move left or plus five to move right but it's got to take into account rotation so if we're facing this way it's going to do this it's kind of like strafe 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 pond pen beat me to it strafe excellent amount is that how you spell amount no idiot it's amount Right, fine. So, seeing as we haven't dealt with rotation yet, I'm gonna be ultra lazy and just do, we're gonna increment X by amount, just so uh, so we can um, carry on. And X in this case is, what did we, uh... oh yeah, we've got a position, haven't we? To do nice. So now we can do strafe by mouse move mouse times two. Whoa, okay. Yes. And say continue. Nice. Okay, so now that's relative to us, which is good. We're going to provide better mouse interface. Like, we're going to provide functions for talking about the mouse and the keyboard and things like that, which are more in line with the aesthetic of this engine another week. It might be next week, actually. It might be the time where we need to sit down and just flesh the API out a bit, but not sure. But anyway, we've got strafe. Cool. So, Mfiano has got some more details. So, Apparently that um, being the elements of is not in the standard. You need to map over, uh, uh, if you need to map over an arbitrary sequence, you can use map or map into. It doesn't allow the use of key args, only lambda list. Yeah, ordinary lambda lists are the only thing for a destructuring bind. Um, ordinary lambda lists, okay. That's kind of interesting. There's a few isn't there because um, you're allowed to use dot notation in these, which you wouldn't be allowed to use in say a function lambda list. Shoot me a message sometime and I'll talk about the sprites and how to use them. Yeah, cool, man. Sounds good. Sounds good. I don't think it'll be a challenge for us. It's purely a... I think we'll do it anyway, but it's um, might not fit with the aesthetic. 
of the uh, writing process. But we are going to noodle that out. We're going to try. Cool. So, good. Um, I kind of want a ship to shoot before in the last 10 minutes. So, uh, fine, actor, alien. The visual is not here yet. What do we do? Let me get back to one of these. Um, yeah, this bad boy. This is awesome. Maybe this guy. That's cool. Save image as. Lisp. Uh, what are we doing? Daft. Spaceship. Whoa. That's not what I meant to say. Alien. Cool. Let's bring up Gimp again. Lisp. Um, Daft. Alien. Oh, it's already got now for mask on it. Perfect. Thank you, sir. And what's its size? It's cool. Yeah, that'll be fine. Um, probably going to be quite big for our one, but it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Alien.png. Um, Let's uh, act for me. actually for now. Main does nothing. And then spawn alien. And because it's spawn exclamation mark, which is basically us being God, uh, we can position it anywhere we like. And position it 200. There it is. Sweet. Um, Seen as we've taken the way to taken away the ability to set X and Y directly, um, we'll now have to strafe based on uh, something else. So let's just do strafe sign of. <laughs> Now that's gonna add up quite a lot, so times not point not a one. And apparently that wasn't right. And we are in there. Oh, of course, it's it's barely anything at all, is it? So I want times thirty. Oh, <laughs> um, ah, yeah, that's one thing we can't really do yet is reset these guys. So let's. Uh, we need nicer ways of querying for other actors and. Where did we put it originally? Um, zero, 200. Um, This is a horrible way of doing this, but it'll do. I want one of this. Def R temp that. So it's just time to screw around with this thing. Set F position of uh, temp to be. Cool. 
So then we need to be able to shoot bullets at it. Of course, they don't collide with that right now. So bullets only crash when they're touching a ship, but now we want them to touch only an alien to make them explode. Whoops. Ooh. When attempting to set the slot's value to 1, the slot's speed is missing from the object's ship. Well, yes, it doesn't have a speed. Only bullets have speed. Holy fuckaroo, I think we uh, made a mistake here. Yes. We don't want to do this unless it's of a specific type. Yeah, we go across all the current actors. Ah, Jesus. Well, that's a silly bug. Did we get away with it? Let's see. Oh, variable Y is unbound in bullet main. Yes. Y is not bound anymore, so we need a way of saying off-screen. Uh, other well, these bullets are not going to work. Okay, so I'm going to hack this for now. Not allowed. So position self. Okay, so they seem to collide. The radius is very small uh, because we're using the width. We should actually use the uh, probably the larger of the two or some kind of combination, but we can hit the damn thing now. Um, we want the alien to have some health. Uh, so its health is going to be 10. And then we're going to say, so we do that. That's fine. And then we can say when... Um, Touching a bullet, decrement health, and then when health is less than zero, or equal to a less than zero, die. Right, cool, so we should be able to kill this now. So that shouldn't kill it. It shouldn't take much more. Die, fucker! Hey, there we go. Cool. So now we have... Um... Yeah, we have the basics. Like, that constitutes as being able to load and kill an enemy. And it is the end of the stream. So that's actually a perfect place to finish this. Nice. So I will commit this. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, fire away in the chat. I will actually be on the right computer so I can commit. And... Oh, yeah, we've got a couple of things here. So let's add alien and... Oops. Add strafe. Move X and Y from um, actors. Um, something like that. Fix stupid bug in um, update all existing actors. Um, any changes to all actors, um, even if 
Okay, uh, all these specified. Tap. Good. Thanks, folks. Um, yeah, so next time... Next time there's a load of stuff to do. So that w it'll be nice to actually play with uh, different kind of states more in our characters, in our actors. Um, we also want to be able to define God, um, who is just an actor that there is always one of. Um, and it's going to be the one that is in charge of spawning the... Um, spawning the player ship, of spawning the aliens, of taking care of things in general. Um, it would also be nice to start adding, um, to start fleshing out the API a bit more for fixing things like this. Just trying to work out what, how we want to talk about things in this system. But really this little game so far is this. We've got three actors defined and we already have something that is Playable, of sorts. So that's, um, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm pleased with what we've got so far. Um, and I think we're going to make a lot more progress over the coming weeks. And once we've got this base down, writing this is going to be really easy. Writing little actors that run concurrently and do all that kind of stuff, very simple. Um, then it'll be nice to throw in, again, a real collision system and all that kind of thing. So maybe next week is more of a... Um, iterative kind of thing we won't see any real new changes as far as feature set like as far as new kinds of visuals or anything like that on the screen but we will try and focus on making this nice to write making it consistent and then we might have a technical stream where we go and look at instancing and things like that make sure all of this is always going to be fucking fast so thanks again for um for hanging out and keep me company and all the suggestions and spec information and things like that. Um, and I will, I'll catch you next time. Cheers.